All right, here we're going to look at another example of finding the interval and radius of convergence. So in part b, we've got the series from n equals 1 to infinity, negative 1 to the n, x plus 1 to the n over 5 to the n times the square root of n. So again, we'll just use the ratio test here. So we'll take the limit as n goes to infinity. Again, when we put this in absolute value, the negative 1 to the n, um, we can just get rid of that. So we'll have x plus 1 to the n plus first power over 5 to the n plus 1 power. Uh, and then we'll have the square root of n plus 1. And then we can multiply by the reciprocal. So we'll have 5 to the n, uh, the square root of n, and then x plus 1 raised to the n power. So when we simplify here, we're just left with a limit as n goes to infinity. Well, let's see here. Um, x plus 1 to the n plus 1 over x plus 1 to the n is going to leave us with an x plus 1 over 1. 5 to the n over 5 to the n plus 1, uh, that'll leave us with a 5 in the denominator. And then we'll be left with the square root of n over the square root of n plus 1. And we can write that as just n over n plus 1. Well, we can pull out the uh, absolute value of x plus 1 over 5. And then we've got the limit as n goes to infinity of the square root of n over n plus 1. Well, again, if, we, if you kind of forget about the square root for a second, as n goes to infinity, we've got n over n plus 1. Those are both n to the first power, so the degree of the numerator equals the degree of the denominator. Uh, the limit's going to be the square root of the ratio of the coefficients but we'll just get the square root of 1. So this whole limit is just going to work out to be 1. So again, what we want is, we want our ratio, the absolute value of x plus 1 over 5, we want that to be less than 1 to converge. So we can set up our inequality, negative 1 less than x plus 1 over 5 less than positive 1. If we multiply both sides by 5, we'll get negative 5 less than x plus 1, less than positive 5. We can subtract 1, so we'll get a negative 6 is less than x is less than uh, positive 4. So now we just have to go back and ch check the endpoints individually. So let's see, we'll have x equals negative 6, and then we'll have x equals positive 4. So when we go back to our original series, I'm going to plug in x equals negative 6. So that would leave us with the series n equals 1 to infinity. We would have negative 1 to the n. When we plug in negative 6, we'll have negative 6 plus 1, or negative 5 raised to the n, over 5 to the n times the square root of n. Well, if we simplify this, Uh, since these are both being raised to the n power, we could multiply those. We would have negative 1 times negative 5 all raised to the n. Again, 5 to the n and square root of n on the bottom. But negative 1 times negative 5 is going to be positive 5 to the n. Well, we've already got a 5 to the n in the denominator, so we can just cancel those out. But now we're left with the series n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over the square root of n, which is n to the 1 half. But hey, this is going to be a divergent p-series. So the series is going to diverge at negative 6. When we plug in positive 4 into our series, where did it go here? So notice when we plug in positive 4, we'll be left with n equals 1 to infinity. We'll have negative 1 to the n. Again, when we plug in 4, we're just going to have 5 to the n over 5 to the n times the square root of n. Well, 5 to the n and 5 to the n will just cancel out. So now we're left with negative 1 to the n over the square root of n. This is an alternating series, so we have to show two things, or ask ourselves two things. When we take the limit as n goes to infinity of 1 over square root of n, we have to think, well, does that equal 0? Well, certainly as n grows large, the denominator gets big, so that happens. Uh, and the other condition is, does 1 over square root of n decrease? 
And again, I think that's pretty clear to see that it does. If you plug in 1, 2, 3, 4, etc., the denominator is going to get larger. 1 over that is going to make it get smaller. So that certainly happens. So this is going to be an example of a convergent alternating series. Well, that tells us then that our interval of convergence So the interval of convergence, so negative 6, uh, we said negative 6 was not included, but positive 4 is included. So there's our interval of convergence. The radius of convergence, again, if we find the length of this interval from negative 6 to positive 4, that's going to be a length of 10. If we divide that by 2, we'll get our radius of convergence, which is going to be uh, positive 5.